and then search. All right, so this is like the final search task. So like I've mentioned before, calibration GPTMD internally runs some quick searches to allow us to calibrate and to do the post-translational modification discovery. But this is the like search text that's actually gonna be giving us our PSMs, peptide, go on to protein inference, all of those results here. So again, we have our basic search parameters. Uh, we also allow you to set the separation type that you're using. So you, LC, or if you use capillary electrophoresis, you can do that here. And that's because we can calculate hydrophobicity or electrophoretic mobility. And this can be valuable in kind of like benchmarking your data and goes into the PEP calculation. And we have our modifications, uh, fixed variable. And then we allow you to say whether you want protein parsimony, protein inference to be applied or not. Um, we all, that's on as default. Our algorithm follows Occam's razor. We want to try to find the minimal set of protein or protein groups that can explain all of the peptides that we're observing. Uh, you can select for it to require at least two peptides to identify a protein or protein group. Um, this is, people have strong opinions on this either way. Um, more evidence if you require two peptides, but now that mass spec is getting better, um, it's not necessarily wrong if there's just a single peptide. Uh, so use discretion. And then uh, treat modified peptides as different peptides. So since we're using an XML database and we're doing GPTMD, we have this option of being able to distinguish proteins by whether or not they have a annotated modification there. So you can imagine uh, you have a peptide sequence and that sequence is shared between two proteins. Identification of that base sequence doesn't allow you to differentiate between protein A or protein B. But if in Uniprot it says, well, this peptide sequence is phosphorylated, but only for protein B, and you observe this phosphorylated peptide, that can allow you to discern between those two proteins. And lower ambiguity is always, you know, better. But you can decide whether you want these modified peptides to be treated as different when we're determining unique and shared for our protein inference results. That's off by default. And then we have quantification. Uh, Label-free quantification with flash LFQ is on by default. You can switch to no quantification, or you can do some um, SILAC quantification. Um, match between runs, you can turn on normalized quantification results. Rob will discuss these more. And then we have a bunch of output options. So writing MZIDs, uh, do you want your decoys written to your results files? Do you want your contaminants written to your results files? Do you want, if you're searching multiple spectra, for to have a cumulative result as well as individual results for each file? Do you want these to be compressed to save space? And then finally, uh, do you want to filter your results to a specific Q value? So this can be important if you're doing like a very large search with like 60 spectra files. It's very easy then when you're opening the all PSMs file that that's gonna be more than the million lines allowed in Excel to open this file. So if you want it to be nice and Excel compatible and not have any issues and have to like filter using like WinGrip before you open the TSV, you can just set a results filter so that only the 1% PSMs are written out. And minimum score allowed. Advanced options. You really won't need to go into very often if ever, ever, but they do exist file loading parameters, some additional search parameters, but a cool bit that I am gonna discuss is some of this post search analysis options that we have. You can construct mass difference histograms automatically, or you can output prune databases that you can use for future searching, which is something that like we like to utilize. So here, you're gonna create XML databases that are um, pruned to only contain entries that have proteins that are identified based on the spectra that you observe 
and then only contain modifications that are observed or in the database based on the various settings that you do here. Now, it's important to note, you shouldn't like search with files, create a database from that result, and then research those same files. That's like cheating. But what we've found is can be really helpful is to do a multi-protease search, create an XML file that then we can use for a subsequent top-down analysis. So we're using bottom-up proteomic data to inform a database for a different analysis set. That's pretty fun. So we'll just add that search task. 